Genevieve Wood, everybody. The stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. Yeah, people are saying, well, he meant maybe maybe he meant proud American, but for whatever reason, did you see that, Genevieve? Good morning, sir. Hey, how are you? Did you see the, the Democratic response and that confusing beginning? I, I did, yeah. Embarrassing. <laughs> I thought the same thing you did of all the folks that, that are out there. This is the best that they could come up with. But you know what their whole thing was? They were so obsessed with defending Obamacare. They were trying to find the one governor who would say what a success had, it had been, which he tried to do. But the reality is the Obamacare exchanges in Kentucky have been shutting down, and they were shutting down even when he was governor. Most of the people there who got on Obamacare got on via Medicaid. So, I mean, if that's their version of a success story, they are really scraping the bottom of the barrel to find reasons that people would want to keep supporting this law. I don't know what your expectations were for the speech, but what was your takeaway from the president's speech? Well, I, I always have high expectations, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and, 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 I, and you know what? And he delivered. I think, you know, one of the things I thought was great about the speech was people said, well, this is some sort of return, you know, like a campaign speech. Again, I'm like, no. What he did is he came in, he talked about the things that he promised on the campaign, and he basically gave an update report. Here's what we promised. Here's what I've done so far. Here's where we need to go. Here's what I need Congress to help us do. Here's what we need Democrats to work with Republicans on to get done. I mean, it was kind of, it, it truly was a state of play, if you will, on, here, on the various policy proposals that I made as a promise to the American people where we are in fulfilling them and what, what we need to do to get it done. So I thought it was great. You know, it was also interesting, and let's get to uh, cut number 25 here, was that the president was able to, there are a lot of people out there, believe it or not, who really don't know exactly what Obamacare is or what the true problem with Obamacare is. And it, it takes, I think, some outsiders who helped the president obviously craft his speech to basically explain the real problem with Obamacare and how antithetical it is to the way a government or even, for that matter, uh, an American society ought to be operating. Here, check this out. Mandating every American to buy government-approved health insurance was never the right solution. I mean, it's it's, it's very simple, but believe it or not, there are a lot of people who don't understand what the real problem with Obamacare is, and that nailed it right there. I think you're, I think you're totally right on. I mean, look, it, and it wasn't even just that issue. There were so many issues where I felt like he really pointed out why it was, whether it was vetting, whether it was his immigration policies, whether it was Obamacare, whether it was tax reform, and every single one of those issues, why we need to rebuild our military, why it was important. It's not like, I just want to do vetting because I want to do vetting. He did a great job of explaining, here's why we need to do it, folks. Here's why if we don't do it, you're not going to be as safe. And here's how this will make us safer. And here's why Obamacare is a disaster. And here are the different ways that we can make health care better in ways that people can understand. I think, you know, as I said throughout the campaign, one of the secrets I thought of Donald, of Donald Trump was that after a speech, most people who watched it could tell you what he said. They right. could repeat lines from it, and they could go tell their neighbor, here's what that guy just talked about. I think you could say the same thing after last night, which is not true after most State of the Union or any address by most presidents. Yeah, because it seems, and again, it is, it is President Trump's simple tone. And, and the and the idea, and yes, I have to say, I've been a fan of his, so obviously my viewpoint is clouded by the fact that I have and had a ton of respect for him and, and adored the guy. But, but still, even if you're an outsider, you have to admit, you're looking at this speech and you're thinking, wow, this is a person who clearly is talking directly to another human being, talking to an American citizen, and 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 as you point out, understanding every word that he said, and I thought that well, was fascinating. He's a great communicator. I mean, there, I think people often confuse, like you know, people. Oh, Obama was such a great speaker. You can be a great speaker. People can walk out of seat and go, like, "Oh, that guy was great." Well, what did he say? Well, I don't know, but it was great. You know, yeah. I mean, you think about. It, I mean, what do you remember from Obama's line? I mean, seriously, so that oh, he was so articulate. He was such a great speaker. But with Trump, I think you actually can repeat what he said back, and that's a sign of a great communicator. And I'm sure that's why you saw the very sad look on Nancy Pelosi's face <laughs> last night, all the distortions, <laughs> among others sitting there. I mean, and they look, 
talk about looking confused. You had a party that didn't know whether to stand or sit. I, I mean, know. especially online, where it's like, forget if you're a Republican, Democrat, you're just a human being. You mean, tell me you're not going to stand when he talks about, you know, helping Americans get jobs? You, you mean you're not going to stand when he talks about protecting American lives? Or when you've got a, a hero's wife uh, up in the, uh, in the president's guest box, you don't know whether to stand? I mean, it, that, that lack of, like, moral clarity and just political calculation shows why they are where they are right now. Right, that, and that was the sadness of watching them when the president said that he would be the president of the USA and not My the job world. is not to represent the world. My job is to represent the United States of America. I mean, to, to, to watch Al Franken slumped in his chair, not even bothering to even give a wave to that kind of statement, is was de- definitely confusing. If I'm a Democrat, I'm... A little embarrassed, and I'm certainly the wind is taken out of my sails for the future because these guys, as you point out, proven themselves not to have that moral core. But now you back to President Obama. You you don't remember the famous uh, "You didn't build that speech." You didn't build that. I mean, you, <laughs> somebody else made that happen. I mean, you know, you're just a deadbeat. I mean, those kind. <laughs> No, that those well, inspiring yeah, yeah, yeah. comments. And the, and the whole, you know, you like the doctor, you keep your doctor. Yeah, I, I do remember a few of the lines, but unfortunately, <laughs> the ones I remember are really bad. I know. To be either not true, complete lies. But the one, the clip you just played of President Trump, you know, he was he's here to represent America, not the rest of the world. That was my favorite line. The not because I, I I think that sums up. And again, it's where he throughout his speech summed up without even having to say America first. Here's why we have to put American jobs first. Here's why my job is to make sure that we protect our borders and why that's good for our allies and for the rest of the world if we're doing what we should be doing. We respect them. They need to respect us. But, you know, people like Al Franken, I mean, as you know, Jamie, they, they're not America first, guys, right? I mean, yeah. they, they really are, quote, unquote, citizens of the world. So he slumped in his chair because he doesn't like that line. Yeah. I don't think it's because he was confused. I think he doesn't like it when somebody says, my job is to protect my homeland first. And then we also are good to our friends. It's like, you know, you're on an airplane. Put your air mask on first, then help the person next to you so you can do your job well. We've been doing it completely opposite yeah. for, for many years now. And I think the President Trump has it right. Yeah, Frank is still obsessed with his favorite line from President Obama's speech. Shame on us. Yeah. All right, Genevieve Wood, always great to talk to you at Genevieve Wood. Thank you, dear.